<laughs> Hi there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here and I am going to talk about a subject that a lot of ladies are really hesitant to talk about, but I honestly get a lot of questions on it, like every day. So doing what I do, um, you know, being a women's health expert and talking to so many ladies about their health or their digestive system or what they're eating and how they're, you know, processing and all, all these other things, right? I get so many questions on oh my gosh, when I'm eating more protein or when I change my diet or when this or this happens or when I'm in a certain time of my cycle, um, I can clear a room in two seconds flat, right? Like this is not a subject that ladies talk about, but I'm going to talk about it tonight. So if this isn't for you, you don't have to watch, right? But if you are curious and you want to know more information about why sometimes it's like an atomic bomb, right? Or like, you're like, oh my God, I, I, this like hurts my feelings. It's that bad. <laughs> or you've even scared your dog <laughs> with some of your impressive gas, right? This is what happens. I'm going to talk about it. Talk about what you can do, what to expect, how to really jumpstart your digestive system um, so that you can be ahead of the game here. So uh, when we talk about protein and increasing protein, um, we talk about protein pacing a lot of the time, getting more protein. I find that protein is the number one nutrient that women are really, really lacking. Uh, and it makes such a big difference in terms of energy, in terms of building that lean muscle to get you into this fat burning zone, just to really help your body recover from being under a lot of stress, from having hormone issues, from so many things. But protein is a really tough a nutrient to break down and digest. In fact, your digestive system uses the most energy out of any system in your body. That's why when you eat a big meal, you feel like taking a nap because all of your energy goes whoo, right to your guts to break it all down and to really absorb all those nutrients, which is kind of interesting, right? So when we talk about protein being a tougher nutrient to break down even, it's really essential that you are doing the things to break it down as easy as possible and really giving your digestive system the natural boost, the everything that it needs to break it down with as little as possible, right? Little side effect, we'll call it, right? Um, and, and in reality, gas is a natural thing, like everybody farts, right? There's that book, Everybody Poops, right? If you have kids, like it's just like they think it's like it's hilarious, right? Like I still have my youngest. She'll come over and sit on my lap and be like, "Oh, Snuggles, Mama," and I'll be like, "Oh, you're so cute," and then she'll be like, Pfft. and I'm like, "Well played, well played, yes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes." So, oh right, yes, right, <laughs> right. This happens to every gal, right, and and it's so true, and and it's also we'll talk about when I talk about hormones. We're gonna talk about the same thing whether you're a certain time of your cycle or uh, pregnancy. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. For those of you that have been pregnant, had kids, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Clear out an entire uh, people waiting in line somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Not that that's happened to me. <laughs> Anyway, this isn't about me. I'm talking about all women because so many women will message me and say, um, this is, uh, you know, this is something that I struggle with or is this normal? I'm really nervous. I, I can't, I don't understand. You know, I like eating more protein because I feel good. I get more energy or I'm noticing more muscle definition, et cetera, et cetera. But holy crap, I'm so, uh, what do I do about this other, the other end of it, we'll say. So here we go. When we talk about the natural side effect, um, there's a bacteria that lives in your digestive system. There's lots of bacteria, but basically part of the bacteria's job is to eat some of the waste products, some of your poo, and the side effect of it is that it creates gas. So the more waste that you have, the more poo that you have, the more the bacteria eats that, and then that it's that's waste product. The bacteria's waste product is the gas that you have. So that's essentially what it is and why it is. So if you think about it, you eat more food, you're going to have more waste, which means there's going to be more of that side effect, that side pro that byproduct of the bacteria. That's all it really is. It's a, it's a byproduct right? Totally normal. So when you're increasing your food, um, when you're eating more protein, all that stuff, it's a normal thing that can happen. Um, if you're exercising more now, again, it's January. A lot of people are on their new year's resolution goals. Yay. So if you're eating, if you're exercising more, you're going to be hungrier. You're going to be eating more again, totally normal. So how do you make sure that you are breaking down the food that you're eating, getting the most nutrient from it? Um, that is not causing gut rot or you're not getting indigestion or heartburn or, or all these other things, right? How how do you manage this as well as you can? 
here's my digestive tricks for you. One is uh, probiotics, getting more probiotics in, right? And, and more fiber, prebiotic, probiotic. I'm kind of throwing that in there too, um, just to help move things along. Uh, easy ways to do that, um, probiotics and enzymes. I'll kind of group these together. Let me write down um, fiber and prebiotic. That's kind of the same thing. Uh, fiber, prebiotic, there. This is kind of messy. There's a lot of info that I'm going to be going through here. Fiber probiotic, probiotics, enzymes, digestive enzymes, they help break down all that food. I mean, it does, it takes so much energy. It takes a lot for your body to just break that all apart and extract all the nutrients from it. Um, and we'll talk about that. So this is your digestive system here. So wait till we start talking about this. This is going to get exciting. It's exciting for me. I don't know if it's exciting for you, but I get excited. So easy ways to increase this. Of course, you can get a probiotic or enzymes or fiber, all these other things, right? They get come in... Um, liquid or capsules or chewables or all these other ways to get that in, right? You can get it in with your food, um, you know, fermented foods, things like that. I like to add in apple cider vinegar that helps boost your natural digestive enzymes and things like that. Kombucha, kefir, a couple easy things to add in. So the other thing about that is that you can do this in the morning. That helps to start off your digestive system more powerful all day long. Yay! Um, that way you're fighting <laughs> that excess flatulence all day right from the beginning of the day. So there you go. Making sure you're getting plenty of water. If your body's dehydrated, it's not going to digest as well or as efficiently as it should. Getting plenty of sleep. That's also very important. Um, kombucha gives you heartburn. Is this normal? Um, it can, it can be. Well, and some of that may be just that it's starting to give you those digestive enzymes and things, but you can also try and switch it for like kefir or, um, a different type of fermented water. Just adding in different fermented things also adds to the probiotic component that you're intaking. Um, if that helps, if that answers your question. Uh, sleep, getting more sleep, and then uh, I put here proteins, fats, and carbs. Uh, really making sure that you're eating complete nutrients together, proteins, fats, and carbs. It, you need fats and carbohydrates to help digest protein and really absorb all the nutrient from protein that you can. If you're just eating like straight protein, that can be kind of tough on your gut. And some of you may notice yeah, that's hard, or ooh, I notice a little bit of bubble gut after I get this like really straight kind of protein. Another thing to really think about though is that if you're doing a shake or supplements or all these other things, um, and I, it really matters what's in those supplements. It matters what's in the products that you use. If you're using something that has artificial sweeteners or artificial ingredients, it can cut out the natural bacteria and probiotic that's in your digestive system, which means you're not going to break things down and it's going to cause more gas or more problems. So be aware of that. Um, also make sure that there's, you know, fillers or other, you know, substitutes. Sometimes when companies put things on there, like a proprietary formula, what, what does that mean? It could be anything, right? I've seen products that say proprietary formula and they claim that there's no wheat or gluten in it, but there's gluten or there's wheat in their proprietary formula that they're not telling you. Um, that's going to, with somebody with celiac, that's going to screw up their gut. Um, again, same thing with dairy, you know, stuff like that. It, it can, if you're, if you don't digest dairy very well and they hide dairy and stuff, it's going to screw up your gut. It's a cheap, easy way to create products and they put fillers in it. And so if you're having a hard time digesting things, pay attention because your gut will tell you, um, how long does it take for your body to replace good bacteria after you've been eating, um, artificial sugars. So your, your digestive system, the, um, the very first layer of it replaces itself about every five minutes. So it can repair itself pretty easily. Um, stop eating the artificial sugars. So things like diet Coke or whatever, stop if you stop doing that and you start really hitting some of these other things hard, you'll notice a big improvement within the first 24 hours. Um, if that helps. So, it, so you can turn it around pretty quick, which is good. Um, yes. And then the other, the last thing about ingesting, you know, proteins, fats, and carbs together is protein pacing. So really making sure that you're spreading out your protein throughout the day as evenly as possible. Again, I talk about, you know, five to six mini meals a day where you're getting at least 20 grams of protein and a manageable amount, right? If your body's not used to eating that much protein, it's, it's going to be hard, right? If you've ever gone out to eat at a restaurant, I think uh, a Fogo de Chao, I live in Minneapolis and there's a Fogo de Chao here. I remember being pregnant and going there with my husband and I just sat there and I ate and I was like, 
bring it, bring it over. No, bring the, bring the huge slabs of meat over to me and I'm going to just rah, devour all of it. Right. And, um, yeah, it was pretty hard on my gut because I, I'm pretty sure I ate almost a hundred grams of protein in one sitting. Just easy at a place like that. <laughs> So if you if you do that, eat like a like half of a cow at one time, um, you're gonna you might get some gut rot. You might you know get a little disturbance you know in your intestines. So space it out, right? Space it out throughout the day. If you want to get at least 100 grams of protein, that's 20 grams of protein five times a day. There you go. Your body can break it down. Um, you never do you give folks a lot of speeches of cutting out the poison fake sugar and get asked that question a lot yes this is a good question um so protein pacing is a great way just to give your body an easier time to work into it again if you make a big shift in your food and eating habits anyway your body's not used to it even if it's a healthy change right I, and i talk to women about this all the time if you're stressed out and you have hormone issues and you make a change even in a positive direction your body will go whoa 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 buddy what are you doing i'm not sure i like this and it might take a little bit to get used to so easing into some of these changes is always a good way just to just to take it easy on your system and kind of nudge it in the right direction versus shocking it overnight that can be kind of tough so those are digestive tricks to help make sure you're keeping your digestive system moving, going really well on its own. Again, these things, um, just adding them in. And this is sort of a something to play around with for yourself. Like, it, like if you have issues more in the morning, great, add these in in the morning. But if you're one of those people that, you know, I, I do great all day, but at night my digestive system really sucks or I feel like garbage, try and add some, you know, kombucha at night and see how you do with that. Um... It, Sarah, it takes your gut four to five days to feel right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. See, so for some people it's different. It can be different just depending on, you know, what you've been through or what your body system, how quick it responds. Um, so when we talk about how fast your system responds, that kind of segues me right into talking about your hormones. When your body's higher in progesterone, which is after you ovulate. So day one is the first day of your period. Um, day 14 is about when you ovulate. And that's when progesterone starts to increase. And progesterone is the hormone that actually starts to slow down your digestive system even more. Great. So for some gals, if you've noticed, like, mm, like five days before my period comes, like right here, I have some pretty horrific gas. Yes. Yes, you do. Because your digestive system's been slowing down for at least a week, if not more. And, um, yeah, and then you get all this buildup in your digestive system, and it's saying, whoa, hello, um, yeah, things are not moving along here very well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, very normal. Same thing with pregnancy. Progesterone uh, it literally means progestation, so your body's getting prepared for pregnancy, and it keeps things slower. So, again, during pregnancy, your digestive system slows down just to absorb every single nutrient from every bite that you're taking. A normal good thing for your body to do but um, it can have those other side effects in terms of uh, you know clearing a room very easily mm -hmm. yeah so that's very normal for progesterone so what I recommend for a lot of gals that uh, <clears throat> you know have these special side effects of uh, you know of, of excess gas during progesterone time again and for for you maybe it's right here maybe it's closer to here it's different for everybody um, and maybe it, it might be when your period first starts for like the first day or two again very normal as your hormones shift and change that your digestive system is still trying to catch up but one of the things that you can do to try and ease that is go right back over here again are you getting enough water are you getting enough sleep are you eating you know the right things and really protein pacing but this right here, these little tricks to throw in, very helpful. I've noticed, and this is just for me, my stomach will get easily upset. I have a really, we'll say, sensitive system. I'm gluten-free. Um, I do well with some dairy, not all dairy. So I have to watch that. If I get too much dairy, ugh, I get like gut rot. I just don't feel good. So one of my ways to combat that and sort of trick my body is to add in more kombucha. Like I have to make sure I'm doing my apple cider vinegar every morning. Um, sometimes I add in an extra papaya enzyme. You can get them at the natural food store, a little, you know, like this. I'm like, make like you can see this. There isn't anything in my fingers. <laughs> it's like a little chewable thing. It tastes like papaya. It's delicious. Um, but just a little extra enzyme. Sometimes I'll use those when I'm going out to eat just to help break down. Because when you go to a restaurant, there's usually 
you know, they cook foods in more butter or oil or add sugars and stuff that I don't eat a lot of. So I'll add an extra enzyme if I'm going out to eat. That's going to help me digest better. But adding in a little different schedule when my when I'm in the progesterone phase helps my body digest better, meaning I get less upset stomach, less gas, all that stuff. If I do apple cider vinegar in the morning and I'll have kombucha during the day and then sometimes doing kombucha again at night before I go to bed, like two or three times a day. Can you OD on kombucha? Uh, maybe, <laughs> but I'm not like drinking 18 bottles a day, right? I'll have a bottle and I'll split it up throughout the day. Cause if you're getting like a bottle, well, I don't have one with me. I already had my kombucha today. Um, you know, like half of the bottle is a serving. I'll have one in the morning, one at night, you know, when I'm in this phase here, but I'll do just one, maybe one, like one serving a day here. So it's just different. Um, serve hormone changes two days before, one day before starting your period, asking for a friend, you're poor. <laughs> Um, severe hormone changes. Yes. Yeah. I can talk about severe hormone changes too. Um, but that's it. So that's like one of the tricks is when you notice like, oh my gosh, five days before my period, I just get the worst gas ever. And you know that that happens around that time, bump up your probiotics, add in some extra things, you know, in the morning, in the middle of the day, at night, just give your body that extra time it needs to break down and digest the foods that you're taking in because it's your body, your system's not running the same here as it does over here. It just doesn't. Um, that's not, that's not how your body's built. Yay. Um, yes. And so the other thing that I'm going to talk about is the foods that you're eating and choosing. Um, not everything breaks down the same proteins and different nutrients have different molecule sizes and depending on how much bacteria or enzymes or other things are in your system can depend on how well you can break things down. Great, right? So there are some, these, so this is just protein and I, and again, I focus on protein because it is one of the toughest nutrients to break down for the body. So that's very, that's very normal. If you feel like, yeah, I can have, you know, I can have this or that and it's fine. Um, you know, like I can eat potatoes and that's fine or rice and my stomach is fine. But if I have, you know, a lot of beef, it gets, gives me heartburn or an upset stomach or uh, that type of a thing. Um, Jill, you never know what probiotic to take. Yeah, I know there's a ton out there. And you, some of them you can try, but that's why there's probiotics in kombucha and kefir, just natural, natural probiotics. So, um, ugh, I have a dog hair in my mouth, of course. Right, Spot? Just in time. Spot just came down here to, to join me. Right, puppy? Yes, of course he did. It's a spotter. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can try, I would say start with something like that because it's a live probiotic and it's, uh, you know, it's just a natural form. But you can also try them in the store. There's a lot of different ones. Um, or if you want a specific suggestion, you can also message me. Um, yes. So protein is a really tough nutrient to break down. So that's why I'm focusing on it. Also, things like raw fruits, uh, raw vegetables can be really tough. Broccoli, cauliflower, um, and uh, like lettuce, right? Those can be really tough to break down. They're very fibrous. Um, and it's sometimes chewing extra um it can help but really sometimes people just can't handle it so also that's another thing i talk about really making sure if you're in the progesterone phase here you know after day 14 if you're eating a lot of raw vegetables and you're noticing oof this is i'm not breaking this down well at all yikes yeah it's hard to break down and your digestive system is just not kicking like it is over here so very normal so just cook your food. There you go. <laughs> um, Sarah, it took you a while to find a probiotic, dairy-free, gluten-free, and soy-free. Yes. Because mm -hmm. that's another thing too. So speaking of, thank you, Sarah. Look at that. Segue right into my next thing, talking about proteins and the size of them. The biggest protein molecule that's in the human diet is actually soy. Surprising for a lot of people when it's so this is unprocessed soy, and this is a processed soy molecule. So huge, just enormous, just gigantic. Can be really, really tough to break down. Meaning, if you are ingesting a lot of soy protein and using that for a large source of your nutrient value, right? A lot of your protein pacing. Another reason I recommend getting a variety of proteins in because they're different sizes and your body can break some down easier than others. But if you're getting most of your protein source from a soy-based thing, it's going to be really tough on your gut. You hear digestive system is a tube lined with microvilli, like little finger like projections that just help increase the surface area. So you're going to digest and absorb more nutrient. But when you have this huge molecule coming through here, 
it's really tough to break down this huge thing and it takes so much energy. So it just kind of pisses off all these, you know, all the micro villi there. So you're not breaking it down. I mean, maybe you're going to break down, you know, some pieces of it, but not all of it. So you, one, you're not absorbing it and breaking it down and absorbing all of it. But two, you're also kind of pissing off the digestive lining here, which means you can't absorb those nutrients into the bloodstream. Um, smaller proteins here, so this would be your whey proteins, any dairy, eggs, um, meat, right? Some nuts, seeds, stuff like that. Proteins over here that are teeny tiny are proteins like uh, hemp proteins, um, rice proteins, pea proteins, just a lot smaller, um, you know, other plant-based proteins. Again, except for soy, that's ginormous. But those are really, really teeny tiny and usually very easily absorbed into your digestive system. So if you're noticing, oh my gosh, I have horrible, horrible issues with gas when I eat this or that, probably avoid that, right? But also notice, okay, am I in this phase? Am I, am I in my progesterone phase? You know, am I at day 20 of my cycle? Maybe that's why there's more gas for you then. Um, where, where's the source of it? Is it something that soy that's irritating you? Again, you may have a specific food intolerance that could be, you know, gluten or dairy or, you know, those are some of the main things. Gluten, dairy, soy, main things that people react to. And when I say react to it, it, it disrupts your digestive system so you have a problem with it. Hence, leading to more gas. Yay. So really pay attention to what you're eating. For some people, they're like, well, I do okay with some dairy, but not other dairy, you know, but I don't really understand how much or when or whatever. Start paying attention. How much dairy did you have? How many servings? Um, and what type of dairy was it? And when was it? For women, it's going to really depend on when. Like for me, I can handle dairy really well here, not as well here. That's just the way my body functions. Um, certain cheeses and things like that like cheddar cheese, sharp cheddar cheese, doesn't really have any lactose in it. So for a lot of people, sharp cheddar is a great cheese option versus, you know, a creamier or, or lighter cheese. I'm thinking like brick cheese or farmer cheese or mozzarella cheese. Again, some of that is very different. Um, some of it depends on if it's grass fed or not. Some people do better with grass fed things because it's formulated differently versus not grass fed. These are just examples I'm throwing out for you to try and pay attention to and just see if that can help for you. It may not be, oh, I can't have cheese anymore, or um, it may be, you know, that it's just this time of, of the month for me and I have to really watch what I'm doing or how much of the dairy I'm getting. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, and then, you know, incorporating some of these other things just to help your body function better, you know. Because again, everybody, everybody gets gas, right? Everybody, you know, that happens for everybody every day. It's a normal thing. But if you feel like it's changed significantly recently, or if you feel like you don't know what to do about it, and you're not sure how to make it better, <laughs> these are some things to try, but also keep track of what you're getting and where your body's at in terms of your hormones. So let me know if you guys have questions. I kind of went through a lot of info and some of this may stir up more questions that you have, which is totally fine. Again, I get so many questions all the time from women. Very, very normal. I guarantee there's no question that I haven't heard before. Sometimes gals are really nervous to ask. They're like, I'm so sorry I'm asking you this weird thing. I'm like, trust me, it's not weird. I've heard it. Like everybody poops, everybody farts. It just happens. It's normal. But just pay attention to where your hormones are at, what you're getting in your body, and really boost your nutrients and it will help a ton. Um, let me just check, there's a couple of comments here. Nancy, you've heard that soy should be avoided. Why is that true? Nancy, great question. So the soy question here, that's a, so just a huge protein. A lot of times people talk about it in terms of GMO or some other things with it. It's used as a filler often because it's really cheap to grow and, and produce. Um, it's actually the number one crop in Minnesota where I live. So it's used in a lot of things um, and it's a really hearty uh, thing. So it can be thrown into a lot of things. You can process it in a lot of different ways and, and it kind of withstands a lot of that before it breaks down. It's not going to crumble going through some different types of processes. So it's put in a lot of different things, but it's huge. The protein itself is huge. So if you're using that for a lot of protein for your diet, it's just hard to break down and digest. Um, 
and it can be really rough on your gut. So this is where gals are like, I'm trying to be healthy and I'm not going to do dairy, so I'm going to get a soy latte. But then you notice after that soy latte that you're like getting bloated and you're like, oof. I can barely button my pants now. Ooh, what is this? And the rest of the day it just gets worse and worse. But then the next morning you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm not bloated. Oh, that's fine. Because your digestive system was trying to heal at night while you were sleeping. Again, sleep, that's a big deal. But the next morning you're going out to coffee with your girlfriend and you get another soy latte. There you go again. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I can do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, sometimes people do better with like fermented soy or something like that. Yeah, okay, again, for each person it's going to be a little different. It may be different for um, what your food intolerances are, where your hormones are at, what how much stress you're under. If you're under a lot of stress, you may notice, oof, I can't do as much cheese. Or, you know, normally I can have a little bit of soy and it's fine, but for some reason the soy is just, oh my goodness, it's just wrecking my gut. Yeah, it totally can because that's just where your body's at. So being aware of where your body's at and really kind of tailoring your food to match with where your body's at can make a huge difference in terms of your progress. Um, and just staying ahead of the game and not feeling like, ugh, I have, I have no control over what's going on in my body and I'm not sure what to do about it. Um, <laughs> Tara thank you for diving into the unspoken. I know, right? It's so funny. Nobody talks about like farts and everybody farts and it happens all the time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I will I will tell you. So I've had, th we, have, we have three kids, me and my husband, we have three kids. There has been days where it's been like, you know, that I, like, I literally cleared him out of the room one time. I think we were, I can't remember what we were watching. I remember like sitting on the couch together watching something with like my huge belly and I'm pretty sure I had like a, like a bowl of some type of food. It could have been ice cream or something on my belly that I was like eating off of, right? Like, it's totally stereotypical pregnant lady on the couch eating ice cream like Mrr. and I just like let one rip and he was like oh my god what is wrong like something's wrong in the house I was like no that was me he couldn't he couldn't even breathe he almost vomited <laughs> yes. anyway but that's you know that's your digestive system when you're pregnant it slows down that much and it's just so so different um, Roxanne asking, benefit of kombucha? Kombucha has natural digestive enzymes and probiotic in it. Um, I like to have people just try it because you can, you know, have small amounts of it and just see how it goes for you. You can space it throughout the day, right? There's a lot of different flavors. So that's the other thing about kombucha. If you try some and you're like, I don't like it, try a different flavor. I just did this with my dad. Um, the last time we went over to my parents' house for dinner, I bought this huge bottle. It was ginger berry um, uh, kombucha. So it's like a dark purpley kind of color. And he was like, mm -mm, no, I was like, dad, just try this one. It's really good. And he was like, oh, I really like it. He had like two glasses of it. I was like, yes, that's right. Converted another one <laughs> to kombucha. Um, yes. Yes, most no, soy, dare I say, most soy is genetically modified. Yeah, most of it is. And that's another reason why people have a hard time digesting it too. Um, again, I'm not even getting into the genetically modified talk about it, right? We're I'm just talking about how big that protein is and how tough it is to break down. Um, soybean oil as well. So soybean oil, um, soybean oil isn't a lot of protein, but there's still that soybean, it's from, you know, based from soy. So that's where you're looking at, okay, is it a genetically modified thing? Am I having a hard time with something like that? Um, so that's sort of a different take on, there's not a lot of, in soy, in soy oil, there's not a lot, there's not really protein in there. So you're not gonna, but hopefully you're not eating that much soybean oil where you have to break down that much of it or be exposed to that much of the GMO of the soybean oil. If that makes sense. Kavita, the best brand. Yes, right, Melissa? I love, I love that brand. That's one of my favorites. Um, yeah. So, all right. Hopefully this was a good introduction to some of the gassy issues that women have. Um, again, I, it's like one of those things, like people pretend like girls don't fart. Girls totally fart all the time, right? All the time. It happens, right? And... When you've had kids or when you're on your, you know, when you're on your period or before your period or all these things, it changes. So that's the other thing is that sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm doing great. My digestive system feels fantastic. And then all of a sudden you're like, Bleh! 
now the next day it sucks. What happened? Hmm, you know, yeah. Amy, you're asking, what if you're not eating dairy or soy and you're doing all the tricks but still have gas issues? Yes, great question. Um, so some of that is going to be if you've recently increased your protein um, and you had a hysterectomy. Okay, good. Not good that that happened, but just good information. Okay, so your hormones are pretty even then, right? Um, protein pacing, really making sure that you're getting smaller amounts of protein. Sometimes if people are eating, say, four times a day, but they're getting, you know, 30 to 40 grams of protein and they're eating four times a day, you might have to break it down and eat really like six times a day, getting 20 grams of protein six times a day. Um, really trying that. And then for some people, it's really, you know, getting a little bit of probiotic in every time that they eat. You may, you may have a slower digestive system naturally. There are some people that have that where they're just like, no matter what I do, I have a hard time breaking down food. Okay. So getting those enzymes in, that's going to be important. Really doing as much as you can to move things along. So the fiber prebiotics, you know, almost at every meal. Um, there's some people who do really well if they have just a little bit of apple cider vinegar before each meal. So like just a teaspoon or two, right? Not a ton. And you can mix it with water or whatever, but just getting a little bit of that digestive bit going before you have any meal can help your body digest better. Um, those are things to boost it and try. Uh, brand of enzymes. So there's a lot of them out there. Again, enzymes that, you know, apple cider vinegar, kombucha, and kefir, all have probiotic and enzyme in them. If you're looking for just a specific enzyme, I always tell people to start with the papaya. It's a 10 bucks ish, 10 to 12 bucks at a, st a natural food store or something like that. Um, that you can start with chewable, keep it in your purse, you know, um, just something easy. Uh, and then, and then kind of go from there. Like how does, does, is it helping? Are you noticing a difference? If you're noticing a difference, then there's something you can tailor and tweak it from there. If you're not noticing anything, that I wouldn't keep diving down that rabbit hole. You know what I mean? It might be something different. Um, Cause then other than that, you may be looking at, if you're trying all these things, you may be looking at, okay, is there anything else I'm getting that specifically for you is bothering your digestive system. So you're looking at food sensitivities and really limiting things, gluten, dairy, soy, eggs. Eggs are a big one for some people. Um, so sometimes people have to go on a rotation with them. Oh, I can eat eggs for like a month and then I have to take a two week break from eggs just because they irritate my system. Okay. Um, it, it just depends. So, so yeah. And we can have a conversation about that if you'd like, cause that's sort of a longer, <laughs> longer thing to answer. Um, yeah. But anyway, if you guys, if this is helpful, um, you can share it with other people. Cause again, some people are afraid to talk about it, but they have these questions. Um, or they're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm nervous about talking about this, or I feel like I am a freak in my body that it's doing this. It's normal. It's totally normal for women. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully this is helpful. Let me know if you have questions. You can comment. You can message me if you're not comfortable commenting. Again, I have heard it all. Um, but I'm, my goal is just to get this information out for women so that they can make a change so that you can you know, be ahead of the game instead of feeling like you're always stuck behind in terms of being reactive to your health. Um, there's a lot more info you can find in my book, The Female Fat Solution, which is just on Amazon. Um, and I've got some really exciting stuff that I'm going to be announcing tomorrow. A little, uh, um, talking about some really fun things I'm going to be doing coming up for the spring since a lot of people are really trying to get healthy. But again, stick with this list. This is a great thing to go through. Um, yeah. And I will see you guys later. Oh, and uh, the Vikings won today. It's a really good game. If you guys didn't watch it, watch some of the highlights. Amazing. School. <laughs> Bye, guys.